Uh, well, I'm just going to get started then. So, um, there's a whole bunch of cutscenes at the start of this because the update they released today wiped everybody's progress and uh, instituted a new campaign. Which means I'm going to get used to playing with the crappy starter tools again. I feel like I should be reading this out, but I did I miss the start of it? Humankind has industrialized much of the solar system. Earth has deteriorated in into a place of squalor and decay. Oh no, I'm too slow. There's a nice little gag here at the beginning that you get a glimpse of what this person's life is like. You can see energy bills past date, dad is sick. Office of civilian overseers trying to get a hold of you. Your friend's got no food. It's almost like the world is in a terrible, terrible state. So, what do people in these situations do? They sell themselves to horrible corporations because that's. I mean, let's be honest, we're all heading back into the age of, uh, you know, company owned and indentured uh, servitude. But it's a fun way to uh, set up your like initial options selection. Studies indicate that orientation improves productivity. Food processors can provide a, a variety of dietary preferences. Food cost is based on current market value and may change over time. I will pick uh, plastic free because I mean I don't I don't like plastic. Yes, I have no criminal record in the Terran or Martian zones, or in the Jovian frontier for that matter. I'm not a member of and have never associated with a workers' union or other labour interest, because... Yeah, this game... The vast majority of the game is not political, but its sort of uh, peripheral components definitely are. I have completed my annual exam and have been cleared of having the collars lung. I have no commercial or real estate interests on Luna, in the asteroid belt, or in the nation-state of Arizona. I mean, as far as, like seceding American nations go, I would have, um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I completely agree. That's because you don't actually speak in the game at all, you only hear your, yourself grunting in pain, and that's the, the, the dialogue that exists, but it is very much, uh, it's not exactly voice recognition. Um, I will bring a positive attitude and problem-solving mindset to work every day. I understand and accept the health risks associated with long-term exposure to a van der Waals field. I will vote for Chancellor Chun Zhang in the Pan American Senate election. Well, naturally, he has my best interests at par. Sure. Oh, hey, welcome. I'm going to skip the training because I've played 60 hours of this game, so, like, the fact that they've added a new tutorial and a campaign mode and some new ships and a new progression mechanism doesn't change the fact that I know exactly what to do. Um. Although, as I said, it does mean that I will have only the beginning tools again, because they reset all progress. Oh hey, Marinthia. Nice to see you. Each day he steps into the yard. and heaven above to return my daddy to those he loves. If there comes a time when he and death meet, bless the next cutter that takes his seat.
It's such a good idea for a game, yeah. It's like, um... There's a lot of, um... Hello, Cutter 9346-52. Your automated Lynx onboarding experience will now begin. Please observe this important message. Faith. Boundless promise. Limitless resources. A brighter future. It's here that hard workers like you, the backbone of civilization, will help us pave the way to the galaxy. I'm Calicia Rye Paulson, president of Lynx Corporation Salvage Division. When my great-great-grandfather, Exeter, founded Lynx, he foresaw a remarkable opportunity among the stars. His vision eventually brought us the rail gate. Now, spanning all the way to Jupiter, these are the veins connecting all of modern civilization. And the people flowing through them are its lifeblood. The rail gates reinvigorated humanity and are key to our continued progress. You have been selected from among thousands of candidates to join the Lynx family. This is more than just a job. It's an opportunity to be part of the largest, most successful, and most pioneering company in human history. Your dream may be to forge your own destiny one day. Well, work hard, heed your superiors, believe in the Lynx vision. Do this, and you too will get your chance. Your first step is to join our EverWork program. The greatest gift we give our employees, turning death into an ongoing opportunity for learning and growth. With Lynx, death is a fresh start. Good luck. I mean, sure, let's have a fresh start. Video observation complete. To finalize onboarding, your genetic sequence will now be extracted for use with the Lynx EverWork Asset <coughs> Replacement Program. Don't worry, pain levels during extraction are largely tolerable. Ah. Please note, as outlined in section 31 of your employment agreement, the process of genetic extraction will destroy your original body. Beginning extraction now. Ah. The juxtaposition between uh, the bright and happy new corporate employee video and the immediate disintegration of your body and then the charge the charges that they apply to you uh, for that disintegration is very intentional. Congratulations, it is now safe to die. Shipbreakers are responsible for the cost of biomaterials used in the Everwork process and an additional fee is required for deaths that occur outside of working hours. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay, how's this? Am I loud enough? I was actually going to ask about audio balancing, but I needed to wait for all the cutscenes to be over because I don't like talking over them. I can't remember how to actually boost my audio in, um... <clears throat> Maybe I should just try talking louder. Although I am told that I yell when I have my headphones on. There's a lot of gags hidden in things like this. You get degaussed, deloused, and then they charge you for... Like, they charge you for deleting your body and then, uh, you know, admin fee, financial account setup fee... They charge you to have your tracking implant installed, and then they charge you a fee to show you the report.
So this system is kind of different to how it was previously. It's not massively changed, but they've changed the progression mechanism now. So instead of 10 levels, there's 30. Um, and the way that ships are presented to you is different. They've also added some... I don't think they've added any new ships, but they've added new layouts and like archetypes for the ships that already exist. And I think they've increased the randomization. Um, yeah, how the hell do I boost my volume in... Right, because I'm a genius, I've turned down the game volume instead, so I hope that works. It looks like... maybe I should have done this tutorial, but whatever. Uh, it looks like I can't get some of the useful basic equipment until I've already started, so I'm gonna pick... I'm gonna pick a level 1 ship first, just because they're a lot faster, even though they're worth almost nothing. It's so strange to go back to having none of the good tools and having to work on the really small ships instead of making, you know, several million every day. I actually put a huge dent into my loan, because you do, of course... As a, as, a, as a member of an indentured workforce, you have a 1.2 billion dollar debt, I think. Um, and that's just the, the, what they charge you to get set up for doing this work. I've actually managed to reduce that below a billion. Um, I'd gotten down to 800 million, I think, before they before they reset everybody's progress. I played this for like 60-ish hours, because um, it's really good. There's a lot of these kind of um, romanticized work simulator games. Uh, it sh as I understand it, it should be possible to completely wipe out your debt, but I, I think they officially said that they don't have any kind of special, you know, unique reward that you get for doing that, because it would take that like a thousand hours of gameplay. Um, one of the slightly frustrating things is that I was actually... I didn't know until last night that um, they were releasing an update today. Uh, I was intending to show off something cool I've been doing recently, which is um, not really a speed run, but I figured out how to... Oh, they don't even turn on the, the high level... Oh, no, they do. Okay. Because they've changed the progression mechanic, I wasn't sure if maybe the uh, advanced disintegrator thingies were uh, gated now. Yeah, it does have some of the energy of those old flash launcher games. But um, yeah, the trick I'd been doing was I figured out how to completely um, detach everything from and get like a huge chunk of the value out of um, an entire ship in one in one shift. The the like. Smallest size of ship, but not the smallest complexity. I was actually successfully doing it every time. Oh, hey, look, it's already been vented. Okay. They've really changed a lot. It used to it used to be that I think there were like there were six levels of ship, and um, three kinds of ship. So you would get uh, various different layouts of the small kind of ship, and then you would get various layouts of the medium ship and the large ship, but like the level of difficulty for the... even the airlock's missing. The level of difficulty for the large and small ship would be like... Uh, for the large and medium ship would be quite variable, so at the highest level of difficulty you could still find the medium ship because it just had much more complicated innards. Um, and it was like... Uh, modular, so... Frustrating thing is that I don't have tether grapples. I think that this is because this is the lowest level of, um, the reason why the thing is missing is because this is the lowest level of ship, and in the new progression, they, you, um, instead of having these six levels of ships, there's, there's way more, um, so the lower the complexity, the fewer valuable materials there are in it, the fewer components there are in it, and so on. It also looks like, they've, looks like they've gated the tethers, I can't, um, it used to be one of the ba one of the tools was you could like click and click and it would form a like a grappling hook between the two and, and yank it in directions. I played a lot of um, upgrade flash games. Though there was a really popular genre. I played one that was um, you had to like uh, everything in it had to be had to be bought with the upgrade currency that you generated. So there would be. Um, 
Oh, do I need to cut? Yeah, I need to cut this out. To get into the other side's inner skin. Oh no, I don't. There's doors back here. That's convenient. But there was one that had um, a huge amount of, of things. Every every single component in it had to be bought, including like UI options and the options menu itself and all of those things. But yeah, I would quite like to get back to the more interesting ships, although I am pleased that they've possibly created a wider array of uh, variants and a wider array of things to do. Because, uh, oh hey, I heard a noise, but I don't remember what that noise in particular means, and I don't have a particular pop puppy thing, so... <laughs> I keep instinctively trying to tether these things. Before the update, the grapple uh, the grapple beam was too weak to move these big armor plates. You could really only move quite small objects. Um, so I'm pretty sure they've upped the power of it. You also couldn't shunt them around like this. I mean, you could shunt objects, but um, these big uh, hull plates were too heavy. So I think my goal is going to be to level up as fast as possible and get myself to... Um, a better better level of ship, because I think these ones are pretty boring. It looks like level 1 is just the hull of the ship with no interior, ele interior electronics, no mechanisms, no systems, nothing. And then, uh, I did one of these earlier. I, I used, um, I made, I had a different account that I used. Yeah, I do have... I mean, technically this is going in the processor, not the furnace. The furnace is the orange one, so, you know, check your facts before you make fun of me, but... Being able to actually shove things physically is really useful. Looks like they've changed the amount of points you get. You used to get, like, loads of, like, money points. One of the main things they wanted to change, apart from just adding a, a narrative campaign, which apparently this is, although I haven't really noticed it, um... I did only play for like five minutes earlier though. Uh, what the fuck was I saying? Well, anyway, one of the one of the things about uh, one of the things they wanted to change a lot with this update is that. Oh right, yeah, I forgot. Like I had all of the upgrades like really high. Um, really high level. I had unlocked almost every upgrade in the game, which meant that my jets would move me a lot faster, and um, I had a much bigger oxygen gauge, and I had more tools to use. Do I even have the the, the deconstruction bombs? Doesn't look like it. If I, oh, hang on, can I just buy Ted? Did I just need to buy them, or do I not have the upgrade? That's the question. Looks like I maybe can. Before you upgrade your jets, you can actually use the grapple beam, because um, it factors in your... No, I definitely can't use the thing. It factors in your relative masses, so if you are small and the thing you're pushing is large, then um, you'll move each other, and if you if it's a lot larger than you, you won't move it, but you could if you reel it, try and reel it in, it reels you in instead, like this. Which, um, before you upgrade your jets, lets you move a lot faster than you otherwise could. Yeah, I know, right? Um, it's almost like physics is inherently interesting and fun to play around with. That aluminium? Yeah, okay. I'll leave that in place and hope it's not an- oh, is this aluminium? Shit, okay. That's also interesting. Is that an underside hatch? It's not. Okay, so they've changed, um that as well. It used to be that it was very consistent. All of the hull plates on certain ship classes in certain locations were always of the same material, so um, I'm used to just instinctively detaching all of the floor plates in, and throwing them in the processor. There's two modes on the on the uh, cutter. You can disintegrate things with a pinpoint, uh, pinpoint heat beam, or you can turn it into the cutter, which will cut a line across every single thing that is touched. See the two the two straight lines? Um, anything cuttable that is within those two lines will be cut. Um, and it cuts the entirety of that object. So if, even if it only touches it a small amount, it will still cut a line all the way across. Which can be fine or can be a problem. Um, it's very easy. Um, 
because I actually got really good at this game, I got really cavalier about, um, you know, just being careless. Um, and I wouldn't often make mistakes, but occasionally I would, you know, one pixel of the cutter beam line would, would overlap a, a fuel line and I would accidentally explode myself, that kind of thing. So, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed that I don't have access to my tools anymore. Um, but I guess that's natural. I'll have to see what I can unlock after this one, because I did have- you do have a few upgrade points at the start, but the um, upgrade part of the menu is locked. I know that it's really common for kind of space western- what's that? Oh, it's not a space western- there's- a little explosive accident between friends gets you ejected from the party. Um, but... Oh shit, I was talking about one of the things they changed. One of the things they changed is it used to have this work orders system, so... I forgot to check if that panel was aluminium. Fuck. Um, yeah, so there was this system called work orders where every time you picked a ship to salvage... Let's see, that's nanocarbon, 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 that's fine. Every time you picked a ship to salvage, it would um, give you a list of uh, specific things that they wanted you to salvage off of that ship. Um, you didn't get a monetary bonus, but you got more upgrade points for every uh, everything of that type that you salvaged um, up to the, the quota. And then um, the rest of it was just like extra money you could make. So throwing, you know, once you'd reached your, you know, 200 tons of um, aluminium. There was still plenty of aluminium to throw in the in the smelter and you would get um, money rather than upgrade points. Um, and apparently the problem they had was that that encouraged players to adopt a very kind of um, goal-oriented playstyle that was not what the developers were aiming for, which meant that... Um, You get most um, most players just uh, they pick a thing, check what was on the work order, sprint around the ship, you know, pulling all the light bulbs off, whatever they needed, um, and then having done that, would uh, then just immediately leave and not even bother to to tidy up the rest of the stuff because they wanted you know the upgrade points rather than the money because the money is kind of just a scoring mechanism. It it doesn't actually have any use other than other than occasionally buying like health packs and stuff. Because of course you you would be charged for your healthcare because this is the horrible f corporate mega future. Anyway, um, I never played that way. My instinctive way to play was to get the most money as possible because that was just what was natural to me. Uh, which meant that most ships I would deconstruct them properly. I would cut corners here and there and um, occasionally not bother with like. You know, I wouldn't bother stripping out the light bulbs because they're not worth very much, but I would I would throw all of the leftover hull plating in the incinerator and so on. Um, Make your way back to the on the platform to fill up your own tube. I did actually switch all the voices off previously. Um, I switched them back on because I don't know if there would be new voices or whatever. Oh, I can, I can pull these off selectively, that's good. How much time do I have left on this shift? Am I not timed? I thought this was... Oh, three minutes and 20 seconds. That's what that is over in the right-hand side of the screen. So I, um... Yeah, I, I felt... It just turns out that that's just naturally how I played. In the old tutorial, the guy, uh, the, like, old hand at this, the, the guy who keeps telling me to go top up my oxygen would, um... tell you to, uh, tell you about this, uh... This concept of you know using all of the the buffalo, um, and that it's you know if you want to pay off your debt, you're going to need to learn to extract as much value as you can from every every ship, and of course because they charge you so many fees for every day of work, you have to be making enough money you know that you're making a profit, um, on top of whatever else you're uh, whatever else you're doing. So because of that. Um, you were supposed to be encouraged to make sure you actually do your job properly and get rid of every every component, but so, so many players, apparently the, like the majority of players, um, 
did not play that way, which is the intended way to play the game. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to, to, to play a game in an unintended way. I think that that's fine, but it's not the like creative goal they were going for. Okay, now this is too massive for me to move with my grappling hook, so I guess I'm going to have to cut it. Oh god damn it, I threw the aluminium- oh no, hang on, that's because I didn't want to cut up the cockpit. It's a pain in the ass to cut the cockpits up. Um, at least before you have the demolition explosives that can- uh, do I start with any of those? No, I don't. So apparently everyone's going to be encouraged to play like I play now, um, which is why instead of that work order system they now have that salvage bar at the top, which... So if you want to, you can just get a little bit and then clock out. Um, it's still not moving. These are still attached somewhere. Where are they attached? There it is. That's more like it. I mean, people are going to go for what's within their grasp, but like... Once I started making, you know, like four or five million on a shift, you know, when I was doing the big ships and I knew how to strip the valuable bits out quite quickly. Um, you know, it felt much more achievable to earn a billion dollars. And as I said, I did manage to pay off like a, an eighth of my enormous vast debt in my over the course of my 60 or so hours of playing. I'm going to assume you guys couldn't hear that coughing fit. I have a little microphone mute thing. Oh shit, no. It's the other microphone. Ha, fuck, okay. Well, no, I don't think there's a loss condition. Your, um, your thing just melts up massively. I think there's kind of an intent that it should be something similar to, you know, um, Euro Truck Simulator. Oh, hey, look, C726. I got almost the entire value out of that ship, which isn't that difficult because it's, um, I think it was like 780,000 or something that was the max value. Changed how these menus work. I would, <sighs> used to get a lot more things on, on the list. I think that's a mistake. I think that's a UI mistake. I think you could easily fit like twice as many entries on this list and not have to scroll. Certification review. I have earned points. Oh yeah, no, they're they're a script currency. The um, the uh, the previous way the system worked was that you earned tokens as a bonus for completing the work orders, and then uh, you could spend the tokens on better gear and upgrades and so on. All right, okay, look. So it based on the amount of money you get from salvaging, you get more. Um, Oh, hang on. Mastery points and aren't links tokens. They're different things. Huh, okay, that's a change. Mastery points did not used to exist. It used to all be links tokens. So I'll have to find out what those do now. There might be a loss condition later in the development progress, but um, as I was saying before, I think it's less of a... It's less of a... Uh, I still can't upgrade my equipment. When do I get to do that? Do I need to level up first? What do I do to level up, though? Maybe I should not have skipped the tutorial. I don't think any- I, these messages I read before, this one is just like- I mean, there's a, there's a joke, you know. You can buy genuine Damas Craft patch kits and not Damas Craft patch kits from Phobos, etc. Um... Salvage goals, yeah, so this is the new system. This is what they replaced the um, the work orders with. Although I do think replacing the work order system entirely might have been a mistake because having specific goals was quite useful because otherwise I had this really specific system of like, go inside, strip out the valuable components, leave everything else, then start breaking up the ship and throwing, throwing chunks of hull plating into the incinerators. Um, it being necessary for me to save a certain number of chairs or whatever caused me to play differently to how I would ordinarily. So I think maybe some kind of blend of the systems would work better. So, blah 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 blah. That gives you... So Link's tokens give you goodies, whatever those are. Um...
We charge you a shitload for being a shipbreaker. That's not interesting. Like the scanner, which I don't need to use really. Oh, I know, right. Um, these people clearly have a, a very strong understanding. Like, their writer has a strong understanding of, like, corporate press release bullshit. So the certification ranks... Uh, it doesn't say how I increase them. It doesn't say how I level up. Recruit rank 3... All ranks complete. If I click on this one, it says all ranks complete. So it looks like... Quota. All certification ranks complete. So everything that it can tell me to do to upgrade it's not there. Hmm. This is a mystery. Well, um... I'm gonna try a sh Maybe Maybe it's look behind the narrative since they've added a, a, a story now. Since this is in the campaign mode, I think. Right, what do I want? Light cargo or station hopper? Anyone anyone got a preference? Light cargo or station hopper? The difference being that station hoppers are um, people transports, uh, although there aren't any people for me to salvage, sadly. Love to yeet some people screaming into the incinerator. And uh, light cargo just has, well, it has light cargo in it. Yeah, sure, let's have a look at the Caustic Williams. absolutely did not used to have characters. There used to be that one guy and nothing else. Is this? Are these doors working or am I gonna... Oh great, fantastic. So there must be a... Um, well, based on the old rules, the way the old system worked, that means there must be a power cell somewhere on board, which is pretty valuable. Uh, it'll usually be within the... <clears throat> between the inner and outer skin. I really need to figure out a... Uh, uh, hot key for I muting my mic. Yeah, this is the campaign. Um, I think they kept the free play mode, but oh shit! Okay, that's new. That's a change. Oh god. Well, okay, that's worth knowing. Um the way it used to work was that if your if your cutting beam did not touch the uh the explosive thing, it would not explode. So I'm pretty sure I did not cut it because I have gotten really good at not cutting fuel lines. Uh 
but so it looks like if you just if you just do it do it too close now it explodes yeah this is this is fine this is don't worry about this um you know i'm just gonna take a seat in the fire it'll be fine don't worry about it let's um it's fine it's cool don't worry about it it's all good The really, the really, the really irritating thing for me, and by irritating I mean not really irritating at all because it makes for an entertaining stream, is that like, I was so good at this, I was so good at this, I could, you know, disintegrate one of these things, rip it up, throw it in the shredder, um, get almost the maximum value out of it in a couple shifts and, well in one of these I could do it in one shift, um, and uh, with no disasters or horrible fuck-ups or any of that kind of stuff. They do have a fire propagation system to some extent, although it's not very complex. So I'm glad that setting that stuff on fire did not spread to any of these crates, because they're... Well, they're not valuable, but they're worth more than nothing. Is there... <clears throat> See, the huge advantage to having the uh, the grapple upgrade, assuming it is an upgrade and not, like, um, just completely removed, is that you didn't have to get close to these things to shove them around. Once they're inside this uh, hazard-marked zone, they should get, like, inexorably yanked gently into the incinerator. And once they're over that red line, they get start getting um, deconstructed. I'm not really sure what the like, sci-fi thematic difference is between a furnace and a processor. A live service game? No, it's a, um, what do you call it? It's early access. Uh, I don't often buy early access games because I generally think that just there's just so many on the market that are absolutely people making a, a quick garbage buck and then not supporting it and then never finishing it. However, um, I will make an exception for games that, um, at the point at which I buy them, already are what I want to get out of that game. And honestly, as I as I said, I've played 60 hours of this game. It's very much the game I want it to be already. Um, you can, I presume you can still charge to push. I won't know for sure until I have unlocked the level up menu to find out. Uh, that was an unlockable upgrade previously, um, so presumably it still is. Oh shit. I need that actually. In you go. That's all good. Hello, hello, by the way, additional people. But yeah, it's not a it's not a live service game, it's a um an early access game which honestly I would be ha have been fine if it had never been up updated any further except for uh... oh I'm dying of oxygen uh, yeah it's generally bad to suffer from hypoxia so let's try and avoid that what the hell was I talking about oh yeah no it's um it is early access, but it, it, it has enough stuff and the core the core fun of what makes it fun is, is in the game already. You don't suffocate immediately upon hitting a zero oxygen. Which is fortunate for me. Oh, I should probably upgrade my fuel up, up uh Increase my fuel as well, because I um, as I said before, I've gotten so used to having the uh, the fully upgraded stuff that I just I forget I will I never you like I could go for an entire shift without refreshing my fuel. I only needed to refresh my oxygen once per shift and so on. Yeah, honestly, it's astonishing to me that we don't talk about the like Great Oxygen Extinction Event or whatever it's called more often because. The idea that the entire surface of the planet could just abruptly become poisonous to everything that exists and then everything either changes or is wiped out is absolutely terrifying and oh wait, climate change. It's a lot easier to get the innards out of these if you just unclip the bottom plate and then throw them all straight down. 
Oh, well, if it's going to make you ill, don't watch. Like, um, I play a lot of first-person games, like... But this is... This is probably more, uh, more likely to make someone have motion sickness than, um... Than other first-person games, because it is fully 3D, and you can just, you know, freely rotate your camera. I say, intentionally trying to make you throw up. But, um, going back to the, like, fail states and design goals, I think that their goal is genuinely, genuinely not to have a fail state, um, any more than, like, Euro Truck Simulator has a fail state. It's about performing a task that is physically interesting and, you know, detached enough from whatever it is, else it is you're spending the rest of the day doing in real life that you're able to just, you know, zone out and chill out with it. Um, until you clip a fuel line and, you know, split the entire thing you've been working on for hours in half, like in, like some kind of, um, incredibly careless chef. With a really understocked kitchen, I guess, that has only one egg in it. The physical interactions are incredibly satisfying. Um, I do miss having access to the tethers because it was so useful to be able to just link two things together and trust that it would go where I wanted it to and not have to manually fling things. But since they've seemed to have boosted the power of the grappling hook, it's uh... Oh yeah, I would not play this hungover. That seems like a good way to just um, ruin some upholstery, let's say. Is that? Oh, that's an aluminium one. Yeah, okay. Ah, uh, they nearly got me that time. One bug I really hope they fixed is that the depressurization system is really inconsistent. Cutter, there's five minutes remaining in this shift. Get in while the getting's good. We wrap. Oh, hey, see, this one has uh, this one has some interior in electronics. Actually, it's got the um, got those lights, and it also had uh, door panels that worked. So even though this has interior electronics, I did not find a power cell yet, unless it's on the other side of the airlock, um, on the inner skin here, which it might be. I think the old the old models had it up here, plugged into the cockpit, but nope, it's not there. Oh, hang on, is that? No, it's definitely not. So it used to it used to have this this kind of understanding of the physical. Um, interiors and components and stuff where um so for example if you if you yanked the the power cell or the power generator on a bigger ship before you had um you know vented all of the compartments and so on then you would not be able to use the um like the computer systems on the ship to vent the compartments so you'd have to uh use explosive decompression which is is generally risky and similarly, you know, you f would flush fuel lines to make sure they were empty before you before you cut them and so on. In, in, in. Go, 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 go. Ah, this is so slow. Majestic. Apparently they always intended to have a uh, story mode. Yeah, no, please don't throw up on my account, like... Um, I appreciate that you stuck it out this long. It means a lot. Come back for, um, Resident Evil Village on Monday. Unless, well, that's first person as well, so it's equally likely to make you throw up. I'd really like to get this one finished in one shift as well. There's some valuable stuff in the cockpit, but if I can't get it out in time, I'll just throw the whole thing in the bin. Because it's more expensive to have a second shift, probably, than the amount I would actually get out of um, salvaging it all properly. It's too heavy still. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut that in half. Oh, I forgot the ceiling plates. Oxygen reserves are critical. 
cannot... I feel like that's a joking reference to something, but I have no idea what you're referring to. A different space horror game? I love the physicality of using your body and your, like, spacesuit jets to move panels around. That's something... All of the physicality in this game is incredibly satisfying. Really looking forward to upgrading my oxygen. What about the ones that are just about spaceships? Although I suppose you could argue that a spaceship has a strong analogy for a body, actually. In you go. Fantastic. Actually, relating to that point, one of the things I really enjoyed about this game, um, the entire time I've been playing it, is that there's this really strong feeling. These creatures are almost organic. Well, not creatures, these ships are almost organic. Well, the X-Series is about being a space trucker, very much like Euro Truck Simulator, if you ask me. Uh, wait, shit, is that the aluminium one? No, did I throw the aluminium in the bin? Fuck, I might have done. God damn it. Oh, the work emails mentioned that you get penalised for wasting. Um, yeah, that was aluminium. God damn it. Aluminium needs to go in the smelter. Um, but yeah, no, one of the work emails mentioned that uh, you get penalised now. So I think that the red bar, uh, or the red... Com <gasps> Time! Oh, fuck. Okay. What can I get out of this? Um, grab a storage locker or two. Nope. I'm used to moving so much faster in addition to everything else. So we lost some lights, don't care, fuel pipe, don't care, aluminium. Zero kilograms destroyed? I definitely destroyed more than zero kilograms of aluminium. Um, right, what were the real money earners here? Looks like it was the physical structure and the nacelles were, were valuable. Physical structure... And the thruster cap, which is the same price they were before. The airlock, yeah, this is all pretty much the same as it was. Certification review. Mastery points. What can I do with those? I still don't know. Oh, hang on. This. Okay, so when I filled this, that's probably when I rank up. I bet that's what the answer is. Yeah, god, I miss the upgrades. Um, I'm surprised that they had, like, a full rollback. I understand that if they're changing the progression system, that makes sense, but... I wonder how difficult it would be to include some kind of legacy mode that let you in would let you include, you know, maintain your, like, upgrades. <laughs> Complete the tutorial. Failed. Apparently that one counts. I can put it where I like. Yeah, see, I don't want to go back to an old branch because I do want to see the new ships and I do want to... Oh, right, I need to upgrade my rank again. Um... We did a station hopper before, so light cargo. Let's look at the pricing. Uh, 1.2 million, 1.3, 1.2, 1.3. All hazards level 2. Uh, oh, I was going to make a joke about the, the name of the previous ship, and I completely forgot what it was. Something about... um. I mean, yeah, sticking it over the heat gauge was really tempting, honestly, but I feel like I should be able to look at that. God, though, the thrusters and the just the lack of the tethers is really irritating because they save so, so much time. It's a lot easier to um, tag something with a, a tether and just have it send itself into the bin than to do it manually, which is lengthy and irritating. One upgrade that is not a new up... Uh, not upgrade. One change that is new... Uh, since the last time I regularly played this, but not in this update, it was in the previous update, is that um, the barge now has these much bigger two layers, so it actually accepts everything that goes into it as being put into it. 
Whereas the previous barge, if you didn't detach components from one another completely, it would only accept one of them as having been sent into the barge. Uh, which is really irritating if you needed to detach multiple things, or when you had things that could not be detached without destroying one of them. Like the old um, mounting plates for the nuclear generators. I'm going to assume that these are all still vented. I can probably safely get into them. But uh, Oh, I mentioned earlier that I really hope they've changed, or at least fixed, some of the bugs with the... Um... Yeah, the sound effects are all really nice. There's very few games that have as, like, solidly tied sound effects. Like, you hear a plasma cutter, and even though you've never heard a plasma cutter ever in real life because they don't exist, um, it's just like, yeah, that, that sure is what that sounds like, huh? See how fast I can go now. Oop. I wonder how much of a... This is probably fine as an onboarding experience for the... Um, for people who are genuinely new to this game, but I'm really keen to get to some of the other ships. Do I miss a clip on this one? Um, where is its bolts? Not there. Why isn't this moving? Hmm. Is it stuck on this one? Yeah, one of my favourite things was to just spit, find the right spot on a couple of um, on a couple of the bigger ships, where you could just spin in a circle, going bzz, 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 and uh, cut off an entire like tail section. But the meaty thump of these is pretty good as well. I might turn the music up a little bit, actually. I turned it down massively, but it's, it's nice instrumental, atmospheric music for the, the game that it is. Turn up a little bit. Yeah, actually, I was I was mentioning before that there's, um... Yeah, that is, that is stuck on something. Ha! I'm clever. Um, there's a sense of these almost as, um, like, majestic organic creatures. That was one of the things that really got me into the game when I first started playing it, was that I found that there is this, it is almost like, you know, gutting a fish, you know, slitting open the belly, removing all of the innards, then cutting off the head and the tail, um, throwing them in the bin, gently filleting the sides. It was this really pleasing thing that then also combined with the feeling of this whale-like feeling of these enormous uh, objects drifting around one another. Some of the larger ships are genuine, like, relative to the player, they are like the size of skyscrapers. They're huge. And um, it just, it felt good to attach a bunch of tethers to something vast and, and make it drift away gently. So I, th I, I'm not sure if I did clip one of these previously, like, um, you know, I promised that I would, I would, I would fuck something up and I guess I did. So I'm not sure if, um, I'm correct about these being, uh, changed so that they will explode if you cut too close to them now, or if I just did fuck up. I love to be incredibly careless in here. On the old ships, I, with all the upgrades, I was good enough that I could just run through here and zap everything in two cuts um, without hitting anything vulnerable. But yeah, there is something beautifully organic to them and sort of... There's an anatomical pleasure to... Just gently separating things and sending them away. One of, my, one of the things I really enjoyed um, when I was first playing this, um, before some other updates, several months ago now, was... Um, that uh, some of the larger ships have a an internal keel structure, because uh, the anatomy of these ships is very is very clear and consistent. Um, there is this uh, there is always an outer hull shell which um, has a uh, an interior um, empty space and then uh, a secondary interior shell which actually compose can. Uh, comprises? Contains? Whatever. Um, 
pressurized sections. So there is this necessity of getting sort of inside the skin of it and uh, unzipping it from the inside sometimes. And what I really appreciate about that was um, there were tons of those cutting points. And I'm pretty sure it was the intention by the developers would that, was that you would cut every cutting point and then, you know, throw the bits in one by one. But what I discovered was that you could learn um, patterns of um, of bits to leave un, uh, undetached. So you could leave entire chunks of the keel section, and then which would leave, um, you know, several large bolts connected together. Not bolts, large plates connected together. Which then meant that you could move that whole like entire quarter of one side of a ship. Instead of it being three or four separate pieces, you could move the whole big thing together. Um, which would move a lot more slowly, but you could just put a bunch of tethers on and leave it and go do something else. It was a lot faster. And it was really pleasing that you could you could figure out your own way of doing that. You could figure out your own um, place to make cuts that make sense for you. Didn't always work because the physics system is pretty finicky. Sometimes things count as being stuck together even though the game considers them to be separate plates um, or separate components. So these, for example, that is one component and that is one component, but they are they are physically stuck together. You have to you'd have to cut them to get them separate to separate. So some of the big hull plates would be really inconsistent with where they would and wouldn't split. There needs to be a word for this kind of, um, not genre, but like this kind of setting, which, because it's not a space western, um, because it's not, you know, a western in the filmic sense, but it very much, um, has these kind of like country, space country vibes. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know, it involves some of the old west like ideas and iconography and so on. Oh hey there, there's an antenna I missed. Go, 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 go. Right, where'd that antenna go? Uh oh god, have I lost it? They're quite valuable. It should be visible on this scanner. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's not highlight because it's not it's not structural, it's a a component, which is a different thing. Still, I found it. That's the important thing. But yeah, um I said this when I started today, before um before most of the people here uh joined to watch. But um I didn't know that there was a big upgrade update coming out until last night. Um, when I had already planned to play this today. So my initial thought was, oh great, I can show off new ships, I can I can, I can, can show off the, the update, talk about what's changed and why. Fantastic, that's great. And then I saw the, um, also we're resetting everyone's progression thing, and I was like, ah, okay, right, you guys decided just to fuck me for no reason. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, so the Space Western thing, it's got kind of a, um... I don't know, there's a vibe which is not Space Western in the way that something like, I don't know, Firefly is a Space Western, where it's the filmic genre of the Western, with its, you know, attendant um, tropes and narrative conveniences and so on with regards to, you know, lone wanderers and towns in trouble and all that nonsense. Um, But there's um, there's definitely a kind of a like space truckers like there's a kind of like a, um, a kind of a, a setting or a milieu or whatever you want to say that is is very much like Western in that vibe of like truckers doing trucker things. Um, any Americans watching, please don't judge me for my terrible attempt at an accent there. And, um, I don't know what's up with that, but it often seems to have these themes of, like, just absolute garbage behaviour from corporate interests, which, you know, is pretty unarguably a theme of 
historical fiction in the West of that time. You know, you've got uh, union busting and, um, you know, mine owners, owners and all of this kind of like worker exploitation stuff going on. Say nothing of, you know, the slavery industry, which is like a whole nother kettle of fish. Um, but not really relevant to the to the way these, these tropes are used in media, which is what I'm getting at. Yeah, no, it's kind of American labor history and the frontier, but without the cowboy vibes is the thing. Um, whereas when people say Space Western, they usually think of something that is very much a cowboy thing. Um, but it's kind of like people sad that they've all got black lung and that the, uh, oh, God damn it, again? Every single time I throw the one aluminium panel in the trash, and it's the wrong trash. Maybe it is I who are the trash. This one seems to be going a lot faster than the last one. Maybe that's because I didn't explode anything. Is this... Every time I'm going to think that I can throw that in in one piece, but I can't. Note that excess carbon dioxide can cause damage to Link's equipment. I mean, the gag is that she says, you know, it can cause damage to Link's equipment, but technically you're their equipment now. They do kind of own you. So there's two layers to that, I think. Oh, come on. One aluminium panel is... In the old system, it was worth... It was about 400 kilos, so it was worth, like, uh, a couple of tens of thousands, I think. It's fine, it's fine. I, I know exactly how much um, carbon monoxide I can take. I know my limits. Actually, exploding can be pretty helpful sometimes. Um, as we will see if I ever unlock the uh, demolition explosives upgrade. Although they aren't really bombs. They do, they do like a physical knockback effect, and anything that is within a 2D plane of them... Um, at specific angles that you can set, gets split in half as if it was cut with your cutter. It's like a really weirdly weird and awkward to use plasma cutter rather than like an actual explosive. Also, if you um, quit out of that fast enough uh, while your your hands are still up on the screen, you can you can see that your your third arm pops your grappling hook cutter back into view. Oh damn! I didn't know you'd been playing that this much. This that much. Were you playing before I streamed it previously, or, like, did I actually influence someone? I know- I definitely know someone said they were going to get this after they saw me play it previously, but I can't remember who. Can't believe you hit 90 hours, I only have 60. How far down did you get your debt? I oh, really, I just, um, I'd, I'd managed to get my, um, I leveled up to the penultimate level earlier today before the update happened, so I hit, like, level 9. Is there actually any... Storage lockers are pretty valuable, I think. Oh, oh wow, okay. I'd only got it down to, I think I, I think I hit 800 earlier today, before the update. Level three. So it looks like I don't gain anything more for getting any more points up on the, the thing. So I'm just going to throw this in the bin. That interior section is all aluminium and should go into that, but I don't have time to actually uh, detach it all out. Looks like making it roll will make it move faster. Is it going to go in in time? Don't stop, don't stop. Oh, thank fuck. There we go. That was extremely close. With jabs? 1.2 million, that's not bad. My old goal was to hit at least a million on a shift because of the amount they charge. So I would usually, I would have a couple of like, three or four million shifts and then one, one million shift as I tidied up. 
Prestigious rank of rank 4. Ship class 3 certification achieved. New message. Level 3, qualified for electrical hazards. Okay, cool. So there'll be um, the, the chargey things on them again now. What are they called? Batteries? That's definitely the word for things that you plug into other things to make them work with electrical power. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Due to regulatory rollbacks introduced in 2299, Link Salvage does not do a preliminary exam of ships to disconnect potential electrical hazards. We believe our shipbreakers are well suited to handle such dangers, and the long-term savings are highly beneficial. That sounds like they're the same as they were before. Ooh, that's a new one. They've had, I I didn't know they'd added any new. Oh wait, hang on. No, that's no, that's a mackerel with wings. That is the same as the previous one. It's just got new stuff on. Like I said, there's new layouts um, for some of the ships, but there's not like new. A new ship class. There's still only three in the game. I can't be able to read that one out loud. Not because... Not just because it's in a Texan accent, but... Um, yeah, okay, so finally I can upgrade my equipment. Um, I guess I did have to rank up one more time. How much do these cost? Cost is... Do I have those? Oh, the, right, these are all certification locked. Is there anything I can upgrade? Oh, that sucks so bad! I don't like that. Um, I can get the tethers and nothing else. Hmm. What about level four? How many? Okay, five. 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 I think that's a mistake. Hmm. I think that's a design mistake. I think that um, having more options and more choices to make is a is a better idea, in my opinion. I have to be level 11 before I get the demo charges. That sucks so bad. Still, let's get a cool new ship, okay. Oh, we don't have the cool new ship. We only have the sucky old ships that suck. Station hopper. They're all station hoppers as well. Okay, well, I see how it is. You can have spam, you can have spam with spam, you can have spam with chips, you can have spam with egg and chips. You can pick any ship you like to deconstruct, provided it's a station hopper. Yeah, that's how it works. That's how they get you. Didi sends most of her money back home to New Manila. Transfer goes to links, of course, and the fees are huge. Kaito, well, he's a good person, uh, but just hasn't really taken to the work. He's been warned that he's a low earner. And me? I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. Once I have zero, I'm gonna work maybe another year or two and just bank it all. All I want is enough to get one of those mining rigs for belt running. Still so many rich rocks along the frontier line. Eventually hire some friends from back on the Eris platforms above Mars. So many good folks who just can't get work. Don't know when that'll be though. Every time I think I'm earning at a steady clip, the company finds another fine or fee to slap on. Anyway, <laughs> I'll let you get back to it. Happy cutting! Oh, honey, you're so close to understanding. You're so close to getting how this- Ooh, ooh, that's new. Ah, <gasps> huh, neat. These, these used to just have, like, blank technical stuff on them. They didn't used to have, like, ads or images on them. What else we got? Thumbs up. Yes, I love this. This is my favorite thing. Uh, I never expected to- Uh, oh shit, is that? Oh no. Ah, <sighs> oh, they got me. They got me good. I saw the blue I saw the blue lighting and I thought that aha, maybe there's a generator in this one because those things are extremely valuable, but no. It's just a it's bullshit. Still no um Okay, I'm gonna 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore that for the minute. I'm gonna uh Save myself the uh, worry. Oh hey! It's so nice to see you. I didn't even I didn't even ping you, I forgot. I'm so sorry. Um But yeah, I'm playing this again. Since uh, I have no idea if you've been keeping up with like my Twitter or whatever, but I should be playing Resident Evil Village next week if you're interested. Monday and Thursday? I don't know, it's on the schedule. Why am I Oh shit? If you get too close to this, its suction field will suck you in as well, um, and it is stronger than your jets <laughs> until you've upgraded them, so you do actually need to tether yourself to get the fuck out. Why is my brakes not working? Okay, that's weird. What's going on? Ah, that's... Hmm, there's something wrong with this. Hmm. Yeah, my, my brakes definitely aren't slowing me down. I ran out of fuel... Ran out of fuel. I'm so unused to that happening. Oh, congratulations. I remember you telling me about what you were going to get. So since I've run out of fuel, I can I can apparently move myself only with my grappling hook, which, ouch. Um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Maybe. Oh, I'm so close. Ah. Uh, I guess putting me in a position where I'm likely to make ex mistakes again, finally, after having basically perfected this game and become the master, is interesting. Welcome to Vendatron 9000. Yeah, no, I, I genuinely straight up never ever ran out of fuel after like my first hour with the game previously. I assume that'll be the same after I get some upgrades uh, this time around. Oh, I lost so much time being distracted. Oh no. Oh, it's slow, inching my way around. This was definitely vented already. Some of these have cargo hatches on the top, which actually reminds me of what I was talking about previously with the, um, the venting glitch, because it's supposed to simulate, and it does simulate, um, the air pressure, and so if you cut into something uh, that's pressurized on one side, it explosive de decompresses, which can cause a lot of problems. Uh, as all the air rushes out, it can, like, break equipment or it can tear things off the walls and so on. Um, which means occasionally something will tear off a wall and bounce into, you know, a fuel line and- ah, oh, fuck. Bounce into a wall, make it exp make a fuel line explode, which then breaks something else, which then cracks the thing in half. But, um... Ugh. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not careless. I'm just efficient. Bonk. This is attached somewhere else, isn't it? Is it? Hmm. Yeah, it is. The fuck was I talking about? I literally don't remember. Um. But then, I suppose, if the people who enjoy my content were irritated by me constantly forgetting what the fuck I was talking about and trailing off and never finishing my thoughts, then um, they probably wouldn't be fans of my content in the first place. By the way, I don't know if you could hear that then, but you can just about hear the popping of the hot metal. If you let the cutter get too hot, um, you can actually hear it like pinging and, and popping the way the hot metal does. Which, absolutely stellar sound design in this game, as people were saying earlier. Oh shit. God damn it. Okay. That was close. That was extremely close. Just detach these fuel tanks before I, I throw these things around extremely carelessly. There we go. That's much safer. I think one of the clever things about this is that um, your desire to get things done fast and efficiently wars with your desire to not fucking explode yourself. There's no engine in there, is there? No. Which means that you, you, you find yourself cutting corners, but in ways that fuck your own safety. Because, you know, that's the only way you can get done what corporate demand that you get done. Which is very kind of, um... 
It's not often that satire manages to have, like... It's difficult to make mechanics into satire. Um, and I think that this game actually manages it, which is unusual and pretty neat, if you ask me. Alright, I'm out of tethers. I'll grab that real quick. Because if that bumps into anything, it'll electrify it, which means that I will get electrified if I get too close. And electrified is not what they call it, it's electrocuted. It's the only way I could get any cuter. Is there an airlock in there? No, that's the inner door. Early on, tethers are kind of expensive, but they're so much more efficient than not using tethers that it's kind of not in your interest to not just use them all the time. Yeah, I mean, part of the themes of Darkest Dungeon are like this kind of like generational um, transmission of things being fucked up. Um, the mistakes of the, your parents informing your mistakes, informing your children's mistakes. But yeah, I think I think that the purpose of that game is to have the horror of those two states, to to juxtapose your desire to take care of these people and treat them well, um, because you know they're, you know, you cheer when they when they do well and you you feel bad when they do bad. The same kind of like you know the ex comp eradicum dating back to 1990, goddamn three, um, and naming them and giving them haircuts and things. Yeah, exactly. Um, and. So then, um... God damn, what was I even saying? Uh... Same ca- ah, oh, fuck, I've, I've lost it, whatever the fuck it was. Um... My mind's completely blank. God damn, what was I talking about? I was talking about... I, I mean, I know I was talking about, like, the... the design thingy in... in Darkest Dungeon and how it can reflect the, some of the things in this game, but... Was I just rambling? What the fuck was I talking about? Alright, Cutter, you got five minutes left to this ship before they turn the lights out on you. It's better. Be rough. One downside to the introduction of the, um narrative uh campaign is that i have to leave my, leave the voices on in case i want to hear characters saying things um i pretty quickly turned the character voices off in the in the previous patch because it gets really tiring to have um old crusty the beard there be like come on in now constantly at me or even just the voice that's saying like um you know Congratulations, you got credits for that thing that you threw into the machine that gives you credits for throwing things into the machine. Like, yes, I know. Thanks for telling me. I'm well aware. Um, I think replacing that with just a, a text pop-up, which it has already. It always had text pop-ups saying, hey, you, congratulations, you threw it in the right bin. Um, you know, this is a very modern game. It does have this conception of different bins for different kinds of recycling. Um... But yeah, I, I usually, I did switch all of that off just because it got so irritating to hear the same kind of, like, credits received constantly. Majestic. I think I was saying previously that one of the joys of this game is figuring out what you can and can't get away with with regards to, like, not bothering to cut stuff off. These, um... These uh, these cage frames on the outside are um, titanium, which means you can't cut them. However, they do have, um, you know, cuttable bolts, so you can detach them if you want to. But why would you ever detach them? There's some of these that have cladding on the outside that's the same. There's no reason ever to detach the cladding when it's so much more efficient just to unzip it from the inside and um, get both components thrown into the bin with um, with one tether, you know?
I can tell I'm flagging a little bit because I, I would my brain just went to actually I'm not going to tell you what my response my, my brain response was to uh, a patrolling the Mojave reference I might make this the last one I'm not sure I'm uh, definitely flagging a little bit after an hour and a half that's not bad for it being how long I'm it's been since I last streamed. I'm definitely forgetting how to talk like a human person. Yeah, no, that was really pleasing as well. Um, they were the rarer mackerels, though, which is unfortunate. But I did enjoy doing the same thing on the, the geckos, the, the really big ships, with just the... Um, the keel structure in between the inner skin and the outer skin. Um, Figuring out exactly how much I could leave on those before I before I would be unable to move it with tethers. I think some of the changes they made with the demolition charges was really clever with regards to that stuff as well because it was really good to like um, have this sense of um, carefully carefully lining up some tethers on like the end of a of a of a tail assembly which was too big for you to move easily with your tethers and then putting your explosives down the middle to crack it exactly in half and because you already laid out the tethers in the right way it all just sails majestically into the the correct bins i think that worked really neat um and i think not having access to it is basically a crime i'm surprised they don't get, let you have the tools like from the start you don't get the Cutting explosives until level, I think it was 11, it said. And that's ages. I'm level 4, was it now? Like, it's going to be ages before I get to level 11. Is that detached? Yeah, it is. Let's see if I can get this in the bin in time. I'm out of tethers, fuck. Okay, that's not going to happen. It's what, 30 seconds? It's not worth. It cost me 9,000 to get some tethers, and I need to get back. Yeah, I found it really difficult to get them into position where they wouldn't cut things I didn't want cut. I always trust noob with de noobs with demo charges. Red spot? What red spot? Oh, um, on the upper bar. That is the amount of material I have destroyed rather than salvaged. Because as I was saying earlier, they were the developers were frustrated by the fact that people did not um, did not use the whole buffalo, as they say. So um, as stuff gets destroyed rather than being salvaged correctly, um, this bar creeps in from this end, and the correctly salvaged bar creeps up from this end. So if you don't salvage enough, you won't be able to get the highest level of um, points and stuff. And if you don't, if you salvage less, you'll get less, and so on. That's not how it worked previously. That's what they that's what they changed to try and um, achieve that design goal in this today's update. But um, I think the main thing about trusting noobs with demo charges is that is the it's by far the most entertaining way to watch a man just completely disintegrate himself into a fine mist. Like, like you think like hazing is bad in real life where people die permanently? You know, it only costs you like 150,000 to get a new clone. Yeah, um, were you watching earlier when I when I talked about this whole thing? Like the whole the whole problem with it was that they their goal was this use the whole buffalo thing, and the vast majority of players would um, check what was on the work order and then buy, uh, run through, grab everything that was at the work was on the work order, yank out the engine, the uh, generator, and so on, and get rid of them all, um, and then just leave the entire corpse hanging there. Which was not kind, kind of not the point, but I think if you want to play a certain way, you should be able to play a certain way. I don't think I'm going to get enough money out of a second shift on this ship. Um, I, I'm not even sure I'll break even, but I'm going to do it anyway because it feels bad not to. I really miss being able to just completely deconstruct one of these in one... Um,
Oh god damn it, I don't get free tethers anymore? God. I sure love being a folksy down home old time classical mentor figure who's definitely not going to die horribly at some point in this narrative. This is apparently chapter one of um, what is intended to be a longer campaign. I think it's supposed to be 15 hours so far and they've got intent... Either the entire campaign is supposed to be 15 hours long and this is chapter one or chapter one is supposed to be 15 hours long. I do not remember. That is still attached even though it looked like it was not attached. But um, it seems impossible to... Actually, wait, shit, if you die, they just clone you. So I guess this is the one instance in which uh, a folksy mental figure will not in fact die in a horrible industrial accident in this kind of Grapes of Wrath in Space storyline. Um... Ah, Gates of Wrath. Get it? Because it's like a hyperspace gate. Um... Oh, we have fun here on Self-Critical Automaton. Into the bin with you, you're all aluminium. Oh wow, that joke was so bad that I lost like two viewers, okay. Don't make jokes about Steinbeck, I've, I've got it. I mean, when you die they clone you and you're identical and exactly the same as far as anyone can tell. Although, as far as I can tell, you are silent, so... Yeah, that's fair, but oh, uh, no, 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 that's fine. Um, like, I've definitely died a bunch. Um, when I first started playing, like, several updates ago, I did my first, like, several um, shifts were just a progression of me discovering interesting ways to die. Oh, I bumped a computer panel against something and it exploded and killed me. Oh, I accidentally let myself get caught in the gravitational field of the incinerator and fell in the incinerator. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you could just- you could probably just find the most- like, the least obstructive and most efficient worker, because there must be someone who fits the exact center of that diagram, that Venn diagram. Least likely to unionize and very good at his job. That's all you really need, right? And then you just clone 10, mil 10 million of that guy. Maybe they're only allowed to have one clone of a person at a time. Maybe there's legislation about, like, you can have backup clones, but you can't have, um, you know, multiple instances of the same individual. Now, I've got so much time left, and it's costing me 500,000 per day of operations, so what I'd really like to do is salvage this as well. Normally what I would do is use a cutting explosive to trim the nose off, which then separates the two side plates, because those are all going in the processor, but this inner stuff is going in the uh, uh, furnace, so... I mean, they definitely have legislation, because they mention that they're only allowed to let you work for... <laughs> let you work for... Um, I don't think that's gonna work, is it? Where is that actually attached? Yeah, that's attached to the nanocarbon frame. So if I want to get these out, I should probably just uh, cut them as central, send as individual panels and send them on their way. I could even take the light bulbs out, but that's really not worth it. Even when I would be wait, like just have a ton of time, I'm not going to be using. Otherwise, it's not worth the effort of stripping out the light bulbs. The thing is, they um, they won't let you buy one outright, but they will they will give you a clone. That wasn't very good. That was a pun that worked better in my head. But there's definitely legislation because they say that they're only allowed to let you work for 15 minutes at a time per shift, which I assume is for game design reasons, but. Um, imagine they're in the process of trying to get rid of the legislation. Maybe the maybe the campaign has you 
um, eventually have your shifts extend as they as they change the legislation so that they can make you work longer and longer hours. Did those actually detach? There we go. Oh, I should save the rest of my tethers for throwing the whole thing in the bin. I should do these manually. I love it when they pirouette around a central axis like that. It's very majestic. What a what a what a Shenmue thing to do for a, a GTA game. I still haven't played GTA 5. I think I have it on Epic because everyone has it on Epic because it was free because Epic are trying to put themselves out of business in the most um Dantean way imaginable, you know, tilting at every goddamn No, that's Cervantes, not Dante. Fuck. Getting my literature wrong. My uh my friends will laugh at me. Oh god, this isn't going in the bin properly, is it? That's my oxygen. Is it even worth? You know what? I'm just gonna let myself suffocate. Um, if I throw this in the bin now, I'll lose a bit of aluminium and glass, but like, Morning. No tethers remaining. I won't have to pay for oxygen, which is the important thing. That's because when you pirouette around your central axis, you knock things off tables. I mean, yeah, the self, the, the social commentary in GTA was basically based off of one person going, oh, wouldn't it be funny if the beer was called Pissvasa? And that's it, that's as far as they got. Which made sense when it was a weird, like, skunkworksy game about running over Hare Krishnas, but, um... That's not, like... It's not clever, you know? Those games were intentionally stupid, and now they have these terrible pretensions to being like Scorsese and crime film epics while having zero writing skill and zero directorial skill. Um, so they just ape the things that you see in crime movies, and it does not work very well, in my opinion. I think that modern GTA games are badly desperate, desperate to be films, and then trying to tie a kind of like a an element of pathos in their character motivations and some of their writing with the fact that their world is an extremely silly satire world, fundamentally. Well, like I said, I haven't played the fifth, but I played a bunch of fourth and so on. Um, yeah, see, I made a loss today. It wasn't worth going back in for this this ship. Right. Um, I think that that is going to be it for today. Um, I did say that would probably be the last ship. Um, I think I would probably keep going uh, for the full two hour window in future, but this is, uh, I don't want to stress my voice out too much considering this is the first, like, time in a while that I've streamed. Obviously when I'm doing Let's Plays it's like 20 minutes of recording, so so I don't have to uh, work my voice nearly as hard, and also people are starting to wander back in the living room and want, <laughs> want access to the house again. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming and joining me. Make sure you go check out my YouTube channel if you aren't familiar with it already, because even though I'm sure all of you are, um, it's good, and I make good things that I'm proud of there. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, also support me on Patreon or Ko-fi if you want to. That's just, like, if you want to kick me something back for, like, my Let's Plays and stuff, except yeah, it's not really for the Let's Plays, it's just for whatever. I'm rambling. Anyway, um, yeah, and also follow on Twitter if you want stream announcements ahead of time. I should probably set up a Discord at some point for that so that I don't have to ping my friends individually, but that's fine. And yeah, um, thank you so much for showing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad this went well. Um, come back on Monday for Resident Evil Village unless my computer melts when I test it over the weekend. And that is everything. I'll catch you all later. <laughs>